Okay, so we're at a really important point in assignment eight now where we've come up with the best solution to our black type in our type setting that we can without rasterizing, you know, while still keeping everything as a vector layer with all of the options of that. So now in order to try some rasterizing effects to finish off my black design, just to show you some of the options that gives you, I'm going to duplicate my folders and then I'm going to right click and merge them. And that turns them into just one rasterized layer. Duplicate and merge them. Because it doesn't take much memory to keep the vector formats. Right. Now what does rasterizing allow us to do? Well then we can just go in and change the typeface itself, right? So I can do little customizations. So for instance, on the G, just because I can, I gotta get off the polygonal lasso, it's annoying. But I can uh, shorten its stem. So much like you saw in the Stranger Things, I can customize it in just little ways as a raster object that I can't while well, it's still a linked vector. And does that make a huge difference? Maybe, maybe not. These are now options I have. Also, like the little uh, distortions and bulges that might happen from tilting and scaling different times. Now you can use warp and all the, the different options of transforming that you're used to with compositing. And I can, you know, push out one edge of the type and really customize it. Always knowing that I have those vector resources to rely on if something goes wrong. If I scale it too big and I lose sharpness. But I like, when I'm trying to go for kind of more hand lettering, by warping it, just tugging at it a little bit, it changes the line weight just very slightly so that everything looks a little bit more hand done. If I was really meticulous, I could go in and round each of the little decorative serifs so that they weren't straight edges, but rather round edges. There's lots of little things I could do. The advantages of rasterizing. But for now, I'm just going to settle for warping them slightly. Like dough, kind of pushing and pulling them just a little bit so they don't look quite so mechanical because I'm going for a more hand done look. I'll do that for this side as well. especially where there are a lot of horizontals and verticals built into the type, even though I've set them at different angles. I don't want that to feel too blocky. So just warping slightly, just pushing them off and on a little bit makes it more like a hand done gesture.
Yeah, these little changes. You know, last thing, I think I just want to alter the P a little bit and then move on. Now this also rasterizes all those little layer styles, those thickening of certain strokes. Brings it all into one. And then we'll get into the big things we can do while still designing them as just black type. Because remember, for the assignment, we want a black type solution and then a color type solution that adds to it and then the full colored poster. So we're still just figuring out black type that we're happy with. Especially if you're doing it with a logo, you know, your black type needs to work pretty well because your logo needs to work very effectively as just a black shape. And so far I'm doing all of this just within the single layers for each, for each word. But if I ever wanted to like customize it with more layer styles or something, I could duplicate any of these letters onto their own layer. Yeah, so this warping is, is helping, even though it's very subtle. I'm liking it each time I do it. So I'm going to keep pushing it. And through kind of paying attention to the things you enjoy, this is how you develop a workflow of your own. You know, things to keep in mind, steps to take that make your work different than other people's. Something you'll really get to explore with your final project. Okay, so now I have these rasterized layers. I'm going to try experimenting a little bit more. I'm going to put them in their own folder because my goal with this video is to finalize the black type solution. And that's a good place to end today. But now I can duplicate it and I can merge it. And then I can try offsetting it. So just giving it a little bit extra space. Just to see. That will give it some energy. And then because it's rasterized, I can do something like this. Just cut away a bunch of it. So maybe want a little bit of movement from the type. So I'm going to give it little action lines on the outside that are restated. So this is where your kind of customization can keep going. in whatever form you like. So I hope you can have fun with your type and experiment with it.
not being trying to be too technical just experimenting so i like the beginnings of that right what that adds to it on the good side and so then i can clean it up and maybe that will help me understand what i want for for the other the other word use my arrow keys move things around slightly i can go in tight it's a good place for the polygonal lasso so this is all feeling very hand done now even though it's very clean The only downside is they are no longer vectors. You can shave off little bits. Oops. the old there we go And in the end, really hopefully transforming it to a type that you want to use for yourself. That's not just looking like something you found. You've made it into your own. Because even text can be a creative expression. So, so far I've just been cutting away. Of course, I can also add. So we design in, in pure black, black shapes, just like our first logo. So it's easy to add new pixels as we need it. And actually the way I'm gonna do it, just to be extra careful, is with my lasso tool. A polygonal lasso so I can get these straights and then just fill ah, with black come on close it up And type is go going to be very, you know, scrutinized in your final poster, especially if it's printed, just like a logo would be. So you want to take the time to get these right. Without obsessing to the point where you are losing sleep. <laughs> 